Hi, this is Angela Starkman. I'm a freelance translator and AV advisor at MemoQ. I'm talking to you today about audiovisual translation with MemoQ for entertainment purposes. Support for audiovisual translation is one of the newest and most exciting areas in which MemoQ can be used to localize texts. You might have already encountered these sorts of jobs as a translator or translation service provider. There are two main kinds of audiovisual translations available. Today, we are more focusing on the translations for entertainment, but there is already another online tutorial describing the particularities and leverage possibilities for audiovisual translations for business, marketing and training videos. Of course, audiovisual material can be many different things. Marketing and training material often needs video localization. We think that its volume will greatly increase in the next couple of years and we already see the increase in the jobs that are out there on the markets today. But today's session is about the interesting area of audiovisual translation for entertainment purposes. Whether you are a subtitler already or want to become one in the future, MemoQ can be very useful and help you to make your translations better and your translation process more efficient. We have already posted several online trainings here on YouTube for you. If you watch them all, you should be much better prepared to start your work as an audiovisual translator with MemoQ. The individual tutorials are Audiovisual Translation for Marketing and Training, Audiovisual Translation for Entertainment, this tutorial you are watching today, and several smaller information bits on topics like how to connect the video preview tool, how to work with SRT files, a demo on how to start a project with MemoQ, and a video on the audiovisual translation process. Check out all the trainings available and also those who will become available in the next weeks and learn how to use MemoQ more efficiently. The purpose of the session is to help you understand the main principles of AV translation in the entertainment business with MemoQ. It is one of the building blocks to train you to use technology better in your future work as an audiovisual translator. Please note down your questions and comments and look out for the next Q&A session on this topic. If you tell us you're interested, we will send you an email with additional information. You can also send your questions, comments and topic requests to angela.starkman at memoq.com or add a comment below. Let's have a quick look at today's agenda first. We have already started with the introduction. This version of the tutorial doesn't include a demo. There is a separate video offering you the demo only, so that you don't have to watch the same content twice. In order to understand the field of audiovisual translation with MemoQ better, you might also want to check out my video about the SRT format. Towards the end, we will answer some of the most commonly asked questions on the topic of AV translation and tell you more about MemoQ and how to get it. This is the golden age of media today or should I rather say the Wild West? Content creation from speech to text is on the rise. Streaming services are used by most film aficionados and you should safely say that an entire new subtitling culture has emerged after many years of a hidden existence in the basement of film and TV production companies. If you look around, you can see the risen demand for translated audiovisual material everywhere and it is crucial that we learn how to work with it, as translators or as translation service providers. Audiovisual translators are still looking to find their professional profile. They know they are working in an interesting and challenging field, but tools, processes, quality standards and requirements are not always there, and if they are, they are mostly driven by individual client companies. In spite of the important role of talented individual translators, and often the lack of them, technology could mean a great deal to improve and professionalize this work for everyone involved in the process. When talking with audiovisual translators, I often hear that not much leverage is possible for their work, as they are dealing with creative translations and every single sentence can and will be unique and original and needs to be translated appropriately. 
I do agree that the leverage possible in audiovisual translation might often be different from the leverage we usually know. Our source material is mainly spoken after all. But then again, are we really always unique and original in our spoken communication? I would say that the possible leverage is different, but that there is a lot of leverage possible. And that the advantages of using a translation software might surprise us if we actually gave it a try. Let's now have a closer look. Please check out the diagram on this page. What you see are the first subtitles of an Asian soap opera with nine episodes that can currently be watched on Netflix. The rest is missing here, but exists in my original Excel file. Every episode has somewhere between 600 and 800 subtitles, and there are a total of about 15 episodes, so we are talking of roughly 12,000 subtitles with five words, which would be 50-60,000 words. Every column is a new episode. Every box is an individual subtitle. I have deleted all the text, but already the colors can tell us a lot. The color coding system I'm using here describes the level of complication of every single subtitle. I have used colors to describe how complicated subtitles are and what MemoQ functionalities they might need to support human translators in their translation effort. Blue-gray is standard text. It may not be changed by the translator and could be in the TM. If translators use different wording, which they could in any other subtitle editor, this could become a quality issue. Green is a subtitle with proper names and product names. It can be somebody calling, mom or John, happens a lot in the dramatic parts of movies, for instance, but also the recurring name of a shop or hospital. Productivity is enhanced if this is part of the translation memory, but it can also be a quality issue, certainly in a project with several episodes or more than one translators. There is a so-called KNP document used to guarantee consistency within films or series. But this is just a reference and people still need to check it and add new words to it, so using a translation memory with terminology functionality could be much more useful. The middle blue are subtitles with very simple phrases and dialogues of less than four words. For these sentences, a pre-translation, possibly with machine translation, is usually very good, but still needs to be checked by the human translator. The dark blue are subtitles with longer sentences over one or two subtitles. The human translator can use the pre-translation, but often needs to adapt word order and also check formality and reading speed. The yellow are subtitles with long sentences and sentences which go over several subtitles. Decisions on word order, reading speed and formality can be more complicated and might require much work from the human translator. The pre-translation is usable, but not final. The possible leverage is smaller than for most other types of subtitles. The orange are subtitles with repetitions from previous episodes. They should typically not be changed. The human translator is assisted by the translation memory as previous translations are offered within the system. The purple are subtitles containing particular terminology pertaining to a certain project. These can be the names of people, dishes, products, etc. Terminology and search functionalities improve consistency and overall quality. The red are subtitles in which the translation needs to be particularly witty or when the original is ambiguous. The human translator can use pre-translation but still needs to be very cautious and look out for mistakes. Errors for these sort of subtitles can be critical as they can distort the meaning of the entire subtitle or scene. So if you now look at my overview again, you can see how much leverage you can get for this sort of project. Projects differ a lot and so would the nature of reuse. But I know for sure that I would prefer working on any project with MemoQ if I'm given a choice. 
This presentation doesn't include the demo of how MemoQ works together with the MemoQ video preview tool, but we have a demo out there on this topic. Please note that you need a recent version of MemoQ and that the MemoQ video preview tool needs to be downloaded and added separately to your version of MemoQ. Audiovisual translation remains an interesting and challenging line of work for translators. In our short summary today, we are only focusing on the linguistic challenges and not talking about the business aspects or other things that definitely separate this market from others. It is important to understand that there are some aspects of audiovisual translation that still need to be tackled by human translators today and in the future. Consider challenges like formality, different levels of language or ambiguities. On the other hand, some aspects of this work are particularly suitable to be done with the support of a computer-assisted translation system. With many simple dialogues, recaps and terms, audiovisual translators can profit a lot from MemoQ. Automated QA check can make the tedious editing work much easier once we all understand well how to deal with it. We are just beginning to make this work for our needs and should all contribute to learning how to deal with this sort of material even better. Let's now have a quick look on the business background of MemoQ. MemoQ is a computer-assisted translation environment tool which runs on MS Windows operating systems. There are different versions available for individual translators and language service providers or client companies, and we will gladly assist you choosing the one right for you and your particular needs. MemoQ offers reuse of your translation through databases. They are called translation memories. Productivity and quality assurance features enhance the efficiency of your work and help you keep high quality standards. MemoQ has a set of collaboration features for translation agencies or teams of translators. It is compatible with many different tools and formats and can be used for all sorts of translations. You can find additional information about MemoQ on the website www.memoq.com. Have you already seen my blog articles on the translation of audiovisual files? They can be accessed via the MemoQ website and offer different insights particularly relevant for AV translators. If you have questions or comments, add them down below or send them directly to me via my email address angela.starkman at memoq.com. You can also connect with MemoQ or with me via Facebook or LinkedIn. Okay, now we have reached the end of this training. I hope that it was helpful for you and thank you all for your interest and time. Audiovisual translation is a fascinating and exciting business and we should all work together to create a new standard of professionality and collaboration for our work. Keep going strong.